You just got your new Doberman puppy into your home and you're beyond excited for your bundle of fun loving energy. But what you originally thought was going to be something kind of like this. Has quickly turned into something that nightmares are made of. are not alone, I promise you. Uh, you did not end up with some little spawn of Satan when everybody else ends up with a cute, sweet angel Doberman puppy. Um, this nipping and biting behavior is actually totally normal for dogs of this age, um, but how you handle this behavior is going to make the difference between whether or not you end up with a 100-pound uh, powerhouse muscle dog that bites and is a danger to everyone, or a 100-pound lap dog who is sweet and, and gentle with everyone and everything. So you gotta handle this right now. So let's jump into this and handle this in a way that Dobermans will understand. Now I told you guys that all Doberman puppies pretty much do this, but why? Well, usually when they're growing up in their pack, their litter mates, they're kind of figuring out the pecking order, right? They're figuring out who's the more alpha and who's not. They do this by playing, and part of that playing is nipping and biting. They also really like to feel their surroundings, and the way they do that is with their mouth because they don't have hands uh, like you and I do. Uh, and also, really at, at this age, between about 10 to 20 weeks of age, their gums are really hurting, their teeth are starting to hurt. They're going through that teething stage as the adult teeth uh, start to come in. By about six months of age, they should be kind of wrapping up that teething stage, and a lot of this should get a lot better. But I promise you that this is totally normal for this age, and you are not alone with this struggle. Now, I have three different levels of correction I like to provide. The first one is just redirection. The second one is... Uh, a disengagement uh, a technique. And the third one is actually the physical correction. You need to pick what level of correction you're gonna provide based on either your individual dog or just what's working and what's not. And what I mean is you can start at a lower level of correction and kind of work your way up. Now, a lot of the dogs that are really in tune with their humans and maybe a little more uh, responsive to more uh, sensitive training techniques, uh, like a lot of the American Dobermans, for example, um, even some Europeans too, uh, you can get away with the first level of correction all day long, um, which is just a redirection. So you kind of have to know your dog. If your dog's definitely a more dominant and uh, more of an alpha and kind of uh, aggressive type of dog, um, then you may need to jump straight to level two or even level three right out of the gate. Now, first level of correction is just redirection. Redirecting the dogs and avoiding the biting and the nipping as much as possible. The more you avoid this and the more you redirect the dog away from you, the easier time you're gonna have of uh, discouraging the dog from doing these behaviors in the future. It might take a bit of working with your dog uh, to get the redirection to happen because uh, you wanna have some toys, different toys in the area, different textures, different types so they can bite on, uh, and try to get their focus on the toy as best as you can. You may not get their focus on the toy immediately, but um, keep showing them the toy, wiggling the toy, moving it around, show your focus is 100% on the toy, and that usually will get your dog to focus in. Once they're actually focused on the toy, throw in a few training commands in there. Try to get them to sit, try to get them to shake, try to get them to lay down. Throw in a few different things mixed in there to help engage their mind a little bit, and then continue your play time. If you successfully switch their focus from your hand, your foot, your arm, over to the toy, and now you guys are having a great session playing with that toy, you've been successful and uh, you can kind of relax a little bit. You avoided that one. Make sure you keep avoiding these. Learn your dog. Know when your dog is getting close to nipping and biting and mouthing time. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to tell when they're getting whipped up. I know I can uh, with my dog Arlo and um, avoid those times by quickly redirecting them before they start nipping. Now the second level of correction is if they actually do successfully kind of nip you or, or mouth you a little hard uh, and you need, and now redirection's out the window, right? Because now they've actually done the action. You, you weren't able to avoid the action that you don't want, now they've actually done it so you need to correct it. A lot of people here for other breeds will say to do the yelp sound, right? The, the yelp, 
and then turn away as if they bit you too hard. The problem is that doesn't really work very well with Dobermans from what I've seen in practice because a lot of what they're doing is an alpha struggle. And when you yelp and turn away, you kind of are working against yourself in that alpha str uh, struggle. You've shown your Doberman pup that they're kind of getting the upper hand on you and uh, it could motivate them to continue. So instead of doing that, what I've had much better results with is saying a firm no, a deep voice is great, um, dogs respond to that, uh, a firm no, and put out your hand, uh, kind of put it in their personal space and crowd them. Sometimes you'll get them you know, moving their head like this because you're crowding them too much, that's fine. Um, and then disengage the dog. Stand up, walk away. You can even just stay kneeling down or, or sitting on their level, but just turn your back to them. Um, and then give them a little bit, give them 30 seconds, a minute, maybe even two minutes, and then you can go back trying to play with them again and focusing on redirecting. They might be still in the nipping mood. If they are, go right back to redirecting and try to avoid the nipping again. Have lots of toys around them of different textures and types so that they can redirect themselves over to the toy as soon as you disengage them. That way, at least they have the option, the opportunity to do the right thing as opposed to following you and nipping at you while you're trying to disengage. If they do decide to follow you and nip at you and continue to nip at you while you're trying to disengage them, you need to go to the next level of correction. I like to uh, give the dog the same no as the previous level, give them the firm no with the hand up right in their face, crowding their space, but then instead of disengaging, I lay the dog down, I put medium pressure on his back, kind of light to medium pressure, not hard at all, um, just to hold him down in the laying down position, and I wrap my hand around their muzzle and just keep them there. Gently, I do not squeeze. Uh, you wanna make sure that their tongue's not uh, caught in a funny way, or their lips not caught in their teeth in a funny way, and of course, never ever uh, hard enough to where it's gonna impede their breathing. You know, they breathe through their nose right there, don't wanna impede their breathing. Um, so just like a, a gentle to medium pressure on the snout, gentle medium pressure on the back, just hold them there. You can kind of try and calm them down by petting them and wait for, you know, uh, 20 seconds or so, maybe as much as a minute, however long it takes for them to calm down and relax. Um, a lot of dogs might continue to struggle if this happens. You can kind of close in a little bit with your forearms to help keep them in position. But here's the key for this one. This is showing them that you're also the alpha. This is another way of showing that you're the alpha. And you do not want to let them win at this either. There's, they can win at this by continuing to struggle and then you just give up and let go. If you do that, then they've learned that, hey, um, I can beat him. Next time he goes to correct me and he tries to hold me down a little bit in this laying down position with my mouth shut because I nipped him, I can just continue fighting and I can get the upper hand and get out of it. So you never, ever, ever want to let them win at this. Um, only let go and disengage once they've calmed down a little bit. Um, keep petting them, keep you know talking to them after you've given the no and try to just calm everything down. Once they kind of give in, you can feel their body relax and the tension go down, then you can disengage. And now you've won and now you've provided the correction that you need to, to affect a behavior change. Most important out of all these steps, and that's to be incredibly, incredibly consistent, do not give up. If you are not consistent, um, your dog will learn that hey, let's try it again, let's try it again. Because sometimes he doesn't really punish me in the same way. Um, sometimes he'll just kind of give up and then I'll have a great time mouthing and biting at his, his feet or his arms or his legs or whatever. So do not give up, remain rock solid, consistent. This is how you win at this is by staying consistent. You now have the plan, you've mapped out how you're gonna correct your dog when he does these behaviors. Stick to that plan no matter what. I promise you it's temporary. When your dog gets to about six months of age, you'll be on the downhill slope and um, things will start getting a lot easier, but only if you've remained consistent the entire time. Now I have a number of different things that you can do to help ensure success with this. I call these kind of like my supporting um, actions that you can do to ensure that this biting behavior is taken care of with the steps we just laid out. The first thing is to start each day by exercising them first thing. If you get out that, that over, that energy buildup they had all night long from sleeping. If you get that out of their system first thing in the morning, you're gonna do a lot better with keeping their focus and keeping them from getting frustrated and biting on your hands. Um, then play with them only after they've had that first exercise. That's the first step I can give you. The second thing that you can do is uh, have a lot of toys all around. I mentioned this before, but all different types, textures, frozen toys. Um, make sure you have redirection tools 
that are something that they really, really like. It can even be treats. If you're really having trouble getting uh, the dog to redirect, have some treats that you can, uh, you can use to get them to focus in on something else besides what they're biting on in your hands. The third thing is to enroll them in basic obedience classes. If you're taking them to obedience classes and they're engaging their mind, trust me with Dobermans, this makes a huge difference. You're engaging their minds with this type of training and you're doing these other things that I just mentioned, like the exercise, the first thing, you have these great redirection tools. It's gonna to help so much with the biting. Um, so make sure you engage their mind however you can. I think obedience classes is a great way to do that. Um, also have more playtime with other dogs. Dogs tend to regulate other dogs. They help figure out the pecking order. If someone bites too hard, they regulate them, especially puppies. Puppies can be regulated well by other dogs. So have them socialize more with dogs that you trust and you know aren't gonna cause any problems. Um, the other tip I have is don't play serious tug of war with your dog because this can be an alpha issue. Uh, and definitely don't let them win at tug of war. If you get into like a little kind of minimal pulling match with your dog, that's okay. That's not going to cause a big deal, but don't get into like the serious growling, like jerking on the toy type tug of war with your dog. That's an alpha struggle. And, um, if you get into any kind of little tug of war with your dog, make sure you win. Don't let them win. Um, but definitely just avoid the, the serious tug of wars in the first place. And that should help a lot. Uh, and lastly, just socialize as much as possible with people, with animals, with other dogs. That'll help make them just overall better uh, temperament and help you keep control of this biting issue. If you do these extras that I just listed on top of the uh, corrections that we went over and that kind of the plan we mapped out for stopping the biting, it's going to just supercharge this and it's going to make it just so much easier to go over this biting issue. And you're not going to be one of those people posting online, hey, what do I do about my my devil dog that, that won't stop biting me. So when do you seek professional help? Well, here's how you know. Number one, if you've done all the steps I've outlined for you um, in this video and uh, including the kind of the insurance success stuff, the, the stuff to boost the success that I just listed out for you, you've done all those things and the steps for correction for at least a month, you remain incredibly consistent with that and you haven't wavered and the dog is at least six months of age or older. If all those things are true and you haven't seen any improvement, it's time to go seek a professional, either an animal behavioralist or a trainer, or better yet, a trainer that specializes specifically in Dobermans or other dominant breeds. Um, that would be the time to go seek their help. Guys, this topic definitely goes more in depth than this. There are some more advanced techniques you can also take. And I've written an article all about this technique. Um, it could be a great idea to print out for a reference for you just to have those different levels of correction. This is all specifically tailored for Dobermans. Uh, if you go to dobermanplanet.com slash puppy biting, you can see my article there, print it out, use it as a reference. I think using it as a reference is a great idea because you got to stay consistent and you can't waver at all in order to have success. So again, dobermanplanet.com slash puppy biting. You can go there, see the article associated with this video. Um, and guys, thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button down below so you can keep getting these tips with, for your Doberman and uh, hit the thumbs up button while you're down there. And don't forget the bell icon so you get notified of my next videos and I'll see you next time. So hey, if you guys wanna see uh, what it looks like when you really exercise your dog's body and mind really well, uh, let me show you. He's been sitting here the whole time I've been recording this video.